Hey everyone, welcome to the DL1608 podcast. I'm Ben Olswang, product manager for the DL1608, and I'm gonna be your host through this series. Now the goal of this video podcast is to give you lots of great information about the DL1608. I'm gonna walk you through the basics, we're gonna give you some advanced uses, and some tips and tricks. Now in today's episode, I'm gonna walk you through the basics of the DL1608 hardware and the Master Fader app that runs on the iPad. The DL1608 combines the power of a 16-channel digital mixer with the ease and mobility of the iPad. As you can see, there are no traditional digital mixer user interface elements on the DL1608, allowed us to make it incredibly small and extremely lightweight at just under 8 pounds or 3.6 kilograms. Instead of imprecise VPOTs or temperamental moving faders, the DL1608 is completely controlled from the iPad. The iPad is just the control surface. All of the mixing and digital audio processing happens in the DL1608 hardware. The iPad can control the mixer when slid into the tray in the front of the unit through the wired connection, or it can be slid out of the tray and control the mixer wirelessly. In fact, up to 10 wireless iPad devices can control the same DL1608 at once. This is again possible because the iPad is just doing control. All of the hard work is happening in the DL1608 hardware. So let's take a look at that hardware in detail. Around back, you can see we have 16 Onyx mic inputs. 12 are on standard XLR, while the last four are on combo jacks, allowing easy connection of quarter inch line sources. These inputs go through our award-winning boutique Onyx mic pre's. On the front, each input has a dedicated gain control with a bicolor green and red LED to allow easy level setting. These inputs go through 24-bit Cirrus Logic A to D converters with 114 dB signal to noise ratio. Again, because all the processing is happening in the mixer, our high-powered DSP applies EQ, comp, and gate to the inputs, mixes them through our ultra-low latency mix engine, and sends them through our low noise D to A converters to the outputs. Speaking of outputs, the DL1608 has six auxiliary sends plus the main left right, each with a 31 band graphic EQ and a compressor limiter. Rounding out the hardware is the headphone jack and level on the front and the power and network on the rear. The power uses a locking connector for the external supply, which supports planet Earth operation so it can work anywhere in the world. The network connector is where you hook up your wireless router. There's no bulky computer you have to bring along. Just the router is all that is needed to provide wireless operation, and virtually any router you pick up at your local electronic store will work, like this Airport Extreme. The last bit of hardware to show you is the tray. This patent pending design works great with all iPad versions right out of the box. Our innovative tray insert fits the iPad 2 and new third generation iPad. Simply removing the tray insert allows the original iPad to fit perfectly. We also have a cool included accessory called the padlock, which secures your iPad to the mixer for a permanent install. The mixer also supports a Kensington lock or the use of an optional rack mount kit to keep it in one place. Let's look at the Mackie Master Fader application running on the iPad. This app will be a free download in the iOS App Store. The iPad provides the perfect platform to achieve these goals. It is extremely easy to learn. There are only two main views to master, the mixer view and the channel view. The mixer view is where you control the levels, mutes, and pans for all of your input and output channels. Notice as I adjust a fader, it grows and glows, giving me confidence that the parameter is under my control. The grow and glow occurs for pan and all other mixing controls as well. And of course, I can adjust multiple faders at once. As you can see, the mixer view shows eight input channels at once. Simply drag or flick left or right to the remaining input channels. You'll notice as I do this, the rightmost fader stays where it is. This is the master fader and it is always available. So no matter where you are, you can always adjust your output levels. Every input has the controls you would expect. Solo, fader, meter, a gain reduction meter, pan and mute. At the bottom of the channel, you can see a large space for channel identification where you can enter a custom channel name and choose a channel icon. We have lots of great stock icons, 
or you can use the built-in iPad camera to snap a picture of the band and use it on the channel strip. I'm going to take a picture of Keith here. Nice. Back to the mixer. Right now, my channel faders are showing me the level going to the main left-right mix. To view a different output in its mix, simply touch, drag, and release on the output selector. Now I am viewing the AUX3 master, and the channel faders are showing me the levels going to AUX3. I can quickly select another output and adjust its levels. Notice that above the master fader, I can configure each AUX for pre or post operation. The last two mixes in the output selector are the sends to the reverb and delay, so you can easily dial in how much verb you want on multiple channels at once. And these return right here on the channel faders, which allows you to easily add delay to the mains and mute them quickly in between songs. At the top of each channel strip is the small EQ curve. This shows the EQ being applied to the channel. Touching here takes me to the channel view, where I can adjust my channel controls. Notice the master fader is still shown on the right, while the channel being adjusted is shown on the left. In the middle is where the fun happens. This is the four band EQ for the channel I'm adjusting. Bands two and three are fully parametric, while bands one and four can be switched from fully parametric to shelving. There is also a sliding 18 dB per octave high pass filter. Each band can be adjusted from the controls at the bottom or from the EQ graph directly. I can even pinch to adjust the Q of a band. And you may have noticed that every time I adjust a parameter, the display at the top shows me the exact value I am entering. Each and every one of the 16 input channels has its own dedicated EQ compressor and gate. I can quickly navigate to the next or previous channel just by swiping left or right. To get to the compressor and gate, I just swipe up. One more swipe takes me to the effects. As I mentioned before, there is a global reverb and delay. This view also shows the send from the current channel and the return to the current output all in one place. So if I want a snare verb, I can add it to that channel by turning up the send, adjusting the controls, and turning up the left-right return, all from this view. Try that on another mixer. The outputs have loads of processing too. Simply touch the graphic EQ at the top of any output to adjust. Here you can see the 31 band graphic EQ for the main left-right. You can adjust it one band at a time, or use the draw function to create the perfect curve. Swiping up takes you to the compressor limiter. All outputs have their own dedicated graphic EQ and compressor limiter. Just use the output selector to access the compressor limiter for aux 3 or any other aux. And no matter what channel or output you are on, the mixer view is just a single touch away. Not only that, Presets and snapshots make setup a breeze for applications of any size. We'll go through these in detail in a future podcast episode. Everything I just showed you works whether the iPad is wired or wireless. Notice how fast it switches over to wireless operation. This is great. I can walk around, tune the room. Every member of the band can control their own monitor mix. The front of house engineer and monitor engineer can each control the same mixer from their own iPad. It's also great for rehearsal spaces that never have a good location for a mixer, or for a corporate gig that you don't want the engineer to be seen. But when the iPad is slid into the tray, you benefit from three additional features. First, the iPad charges while connected. Second, there is a 17th channel labeled iPad that allows playback from any audio app that supports background audio. Simply switch to another app, even if audio is still going through the mixer, start playback, and switch back. Since this input has a dedicated channel strip, it also has a full EQ and compressor. Finally, the Master Fader app can record the stereo main mix with just a single push of a button. When completed, offload it to your computer for a quick web upload. Thank you.